All right, here is our review numbers 7 through 12. This first question is talking about the shape of the sampling distribution. So our last unit, six, referenced sampling distributions, okay? And so here we have sample means, okay, X bars. These samples were made from something large enough. And so because these samples were made from large enough, you can see all of these, this lower section, they are all sampling distributions that are approximately normal. Whereas this second row, had a small sample size. So these X bars did not necessarily create a normal sampling distribution. Only this one who came from a normal population did. So in summary, what it says here is, if N is large enough, it does not matter the shape of the population that sampling distribution will be approximately normal. If N is large enough, then it doesn't matter. The shape of the population, the sampling distribution's approximately normal. Okay, moving on, number eight. Man, this number eight is a really good example of how even with a multiple choice question, you have to understand the entire hypothesis testing situation. So let's just start from the get-go. So what happened was I see that this question is asking me about evidence, okay? And in order to have statistical evidence of a claim, I need to run a hypothesis test and have a p-value. So I first, you know, so I kind of start going through my phantoms. I know that I'm talking about the proportion of um, people that die, let's see, the death rate from a particular form of cancer during that first year. So, so that's my parameter. Then I'm thinking, okay, my null hypothesis is that it stays at 23%, which is the current death rate, but I'm wondering if this reduces the mortality rate. So there's my alternative. Now, I didn't do the conditions. I just assumed that I guess we're going to be fine on conditions since we're doing this problem, okay? Um, although E says the answer cannot be given without first knowing, and so that makes me think, ooh, do I need to check my conditions? And then it talks about placebo, so I'm like, okay, we're fine. So population P is 0.23. P hat is the sample results I got, 15 out of 84. Then I did this standard deviation. And you know what? The first time I did this, I had to go back and fix it on my answer key. I had 0.18. I had P hat in there. And that's wrong. Don't forget to put true P in that standard deviation. Okay? So that's a 0.046. So then I do my Z score of my P hat minus the true P over the standard deviation of those P hats, and I get that negative 1.09. I norm CDF the lower tail because that is my uh, thing there, and I get a P value of like 0.18. Oh, I didn't change that. I think it comes out to be point. Oh, no, I think it is 0.137. It was 0.117. Okay, so anyway, so there we go. So I come over here. Now, first then think to yourself. See, this is, again, why you have to think through a whole test. So if I have a p-value of 0.13, so I can tell that that 0.13 is going to be greater than my alpha of 0.05. So if my p-value is greater than alpha, I am going to, it is not low, so I do not reject HO, so I'm going to fail to reject right here. P-value is not lower, so I fail to reject, so I do not have evidence that the of HA, no evidence of HA. So, therefore, is this strong evidence? And that answer is no, because the P-value is greater than 0.10. I mean, it could have said greater than 0.05, whichever, okay? All right, moving on. 
So here, which one makes wider? Okay, so um, on this first question here, the um, confidence Z star, see, margin of error are those whiskers on your interval. You know, here's your P hat, then you have a margin of error up and a margin of error down. And the thing that makes this margin of error is the critical value times that standard deviation. So here they say Z star stays the same. So the question then is what happens with sample size is changing from point from 25 to 75. Well, I know that as n goes up, so this one's going to be smaller standard deviation because a bigger denominator makes a smaller fraction. So therefore, this one is larger, wider, bigger standard deviation. Okay, the next one, same thing where the sample sizes are the same, n is the same, but this critical value is different. And I know that 90% confident versus 99% confident, more confidence is wider. So that makes this one have a bigger confidence interval. Okay, number 10. Number 10 really takes you through, you had to know very well. And number 11, I actually almost like number 11 bet, uh, to do 11 before 10. Okay, you know, you need to know again, those um, parts of how to do an interval. So we know, of course, here in the middle, if we looked at that number 11, you know, our, our, of, in our interval, the middle of it is going to be P hat. So the value smack dab in the center is that P hat. So to get that point estimate, I just added the two endpoints. So from the lower bound to the upper bound and divided by two. And that gives me that average, that P hat right there in the center of 0.58. Now, then I know that from this P hat to the one of the endpoints, that is the margin of error. So I just find that distance. So I just did one of them, they're the same. So I just did 0.68 minus 0.58 to get that margin of error. Now, Keep in mind this. This is not on the formula chart, but it's very important that you know the two things that make up this margin of error, that make up that whisker. The two things are the critical value, that is from your confidence level related, and then of course your standard deviation. So, what I know, what I have been told in this number 10 is 89%, so that is my P hat and my 1 minus P hat, okay? I base that conclusion on 180 students, so that is my N, and then a margin of error of 4.2, so that is this number here. So look, I fill in all of these items, and the only one that is missing is Z star, so I then solve algebraically for that. And then I do my little 0.042 divided by 0.023 to get Z star. Z star then is 1.83. But I know that confidence level is this area that's here in the middle. Okay, I wanna type that in here. So this, oh, I have it written there. So this confidence level is what's here in the middle. I wrote it. So I need to figure out how much area this is from that lower Z star, from this lower Z star to this upper Z star. Well, I'm, so I'm going from negative 1.83 to the upper 1.83, and I norm CDF to get that area and so that is how I got that area. And that then would be my confidence level. My, I don't know if you round appropriately or if you always round up. I'm not sure. So we're going to go with 93%. Okay, so there's 10 and 11. So let's do this last one, number 12. 
Um, so I just threw an unusual confidence level at you. So the critical value for confidence level. Remember that confidence level is what's here in the middle. So if 70% is in the middle, then we split that remaining 30% between the two edges. So I'm going to do inverse norm of 0.15. So I get negative 1.04. And then from that, I know, of course, my positive twin up here is positive 1.04. So those are the two critical values. Okay. That is the end of numbers one th or seven through 12 of this unit seven, eight review. I hope that answered your questions on those problems.